Dr. Shabir, welcome to Let the Quran Speak. Pleasure to be on. We're looking at misunderstood verses of the Quran, Dr. Shabir. And the verse we're looking at is from chapter 5, verse 60. And it says, Say, will I tell you in the sight of God who deserves worse punishment than these? They whom God has rejected and whom he condemned and turned into apes and pigs because they worship the powers of evil. They are worse in rank and farther astray from the right path. So this verse, I, I believe the interesting part that you want to address is the apes and pigs part, right? Yes, yes. yes. So, uh, you know, saying, Yes, and sometimes you hear people saying, like, that's why Allah turned these people into apes and pigs, right? They'll refer to certain people and they'll say, that's why Allah turned them into apes and pigs. Yeah, and even worse, they might even refer to some people as the brothers of apes and pigs, uh, you know, and, and as if people are still... Uh, either so closely associated with those who have been turned into apes and pigs, uh, or uh, some might even wonder, you know, is, is it possible that some descendants of those apes and pigs uh, are still running about uh, around us, right? Uh, but uh, to answer this, uh, a, a hadith says that those people whom Allah has changed in the past, uh, transformed them into some animals, uh, they, they, they did not leave any progeny. So it was just like a one generational uh, thing. But but uh, you will find in the classical commentaries uh, on this, you know, wide speculation among Muslims, good and, you know, very um, upright and uh, intelligent uh, Muslims, but they live in a social milieu in which it's possible for them to contemplate these things. So they think that, okay, uh, they, because it says apes and pigs, so uh, it wasn't like both at once for the same person. So some persons were changed into apes, some people changed into pigs, and so on. Mm -hmm. And then there are th there are even discussions about, okay, so if they are changed into apes and pigs, uh, what about their human mind? So it must be like, you know, this, these apes and pigs are there and they have human minds, right? Because they must, for that, for it to be a punishment, because the whole context of the verse is that, yeah, should I inform you of, uh, uh, that which is uh, uh, worse in terms of uh, punishment. And, uh, you know, uh, think about the people whom God changed into, so, into apes and pigs. So those who are changed into apes and pigs presumably are uh, for the purpose of punishing them. Mm -hmm. But then if you uh, turn them into apes and pigs, and let's say they have the, the minds of apes and pigs, then they have no idea that they've been punished for anything, <laughs> right? Yes. So that they would have to retain the human mind. So then mm -hmm. you have to imagine the human mind surviving in, you know, in the brain of an ape or a pig. And um, for us today, this seems unthinkable, right? It's uh, Anyone can cite a miracle for anything, but uh, for, if, we, if we're just looking at, you know, Know, how much of a burden it is to believe in that as it is to, to, to take it literally, you find that uh, people are always divided. There will be people who say, yeah, I believe it, God said it, and that settles it, right? But uh, there will be others who will be saying, well, wait a minute, maybe God didn't mean for us to take it literally. And in fact, uh, this uh, modern hesitation to take it literally was already uh, expressed uh, very early in our tradition by, uh, by Mujahid. Uh, he was uh, one of the students of uh, Ibn Abbas. And uh, he said that, uh, and this is mentioned in the classical books of Tafsir, but sometimes it's mentioned and, and dismissed, but uh, uh, one who finds difficulty in taking the verse literally uh, may, may find uh, comfort in this um, opinion. That it's not that they were physically transformed to become apes and pigs, but they took on the behaviors of apes and pigs to a certain extent as well. Now we might add to that that in our own modern experience, we might say that somebody is eating like a pig. We don't mean that uh, they, they are actually pigs, but we mean that they are, uh, and we don't mean they're, that they're doing all of the grunting and everything like that, but we might mean that they're eating gluttonously or something like mm -hmm. this. Or somebody is a pig. We don't, uh, it's not about eating, but we, we mean their behavior is not like the behavior of a, of a cultivated human being, this is like the behavior of someone rolling about in mud in the sty. Saying that God changed them into apes and pigs uh, would, um, or, or made from among them apes and pigs, uh, would just simply mean, in this case, uh, taking, it, taking it metaphorically, uh, that uh, God caused them to, as a kind of a punishment to them, uh, to adopt some behaviors that we might derisively 
refer to as the behaviors of apes and pigs. We can say, you know, this guy's an ape, right? So, you know, the point is already uh, well uh, taken, I think, that uh, it's not necessary to uh, take the verse like this literally and, and burden the minds of uh, especially young Muslims with uh, trying, trying to, to imagine how it, it actually happened and like what happened to the descendants and things like exactly. that. Exactly. Right? And whether they had a human mind in the body of a pig and where does that human mind reside if, you know, it is the brain of the pig yes. um, able to sustain the mind of a human and, and so on, right? The two avenues are open. Some people will insist on taking it uh, literally and uh, some people will find great comfort in knowing that uh, a verse like this does not need to be taken literally. And in my humble view, we should not take it literally. Uh, otherwise, uh, we are putting too great a burden on, on people and calling on them to believe in, in this book, especially if we're going to present this message to our non-Muslim friends and say, okay, believe in this. And then they come to it and say, well, wait a minute, you're saying that in history, some people were changed into apes and pigs. So does that really happen? Or is this ki a kind of a storybook type of element that uh, is brought into this narrative. Mm -hmm. But if you say, oh, it was meant to be taken metaphorically, uh, or, or that's our best reading of it, then it just frees up that whole discussion. Then we can go on to the substantial things, which are in the Quran about morality and ethics and belief in one God and the life hereafter and judgment uh, for our deeds in this life. All right, we'll leave it at that. Thank you, Dr. Shibir. You're welcome. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Muslim Media Hub, the new home of Let the Quran Speak. Here we spread positivity and good. We help people experience the beauty of Islam and uh, help them appreciate and understand Muslims. This beautiful building we purchased at cost $2.3 million. Yeah, we've already raised a third of that money and with your help, inshallah, we can pay off the rest. So we're looking for people who can give $1,000 each. If you can be part of the select group, that's amazing. Otherwise, just uh, please give whatever you can every dollar counts it's our collective responsibility to share the message of islam with our fellow human beings please help us continue this good work it's a sadaqa jariya something that will continue to be a benefit to the muslim community long after safiya and i are gone <laughs> <laughs> please support our work at muslimmediahub.com your support is zakat eligible and tax deductible may allah bless you and your loved ones today and always assalamu alaikum assalamu alaikum <laughs>